Okay. So in this video, we're just doing some mild fascial release on the shoulder, uh, arm and hand. So if your client comes in with complaints of, uh, elbow pain or any numbness or tingling in the hands, um, this is signs of, of the numbing, numbing and tingling is signs of neuropathy. Typically when somebody has this, uh, protracted shoulder, then it's going to impinge on the brachial plexus and cause dysfunction of the nerves coming down. Depending on where the numbness and tingling is in the fingers is going to directly relate to a, a nerve root in the cervical spine. So you'll know exactly um, what's going on if somebody says their last two fingers. Um, so personally, I'm going to work the back first, get the shoulder girdle loosened first, um, and then I'm gonna work the shoulder and arm, and then lastly, I'm gonna go and work the cervical spine. So we're gonna pretend that I already did the back, and you can see here that her shoulder is forward. This shoulder is higher, and this is the arm that she's having problems in. So in order to create more space within the, uh, the brachial plexus here, we want to bring this shoulder back. This is kind of have, it has a protraction, mm -hmm. and because her thumb is, is more inward, usually when she stands, that means there's some um, humeral internal rotation in the glenoid fossa, you have the, the internal rotation, so there's just a lot of compression on these nerves and blood vessels running down to the arm. So, and again, in order to work the cervical spine, if my shoulders are forward, there's no way I'm going to bring this head back. I'm going to have to bring the shoulders back first, then bring, bring the head back. So, if somebody has uh, headaches or, or, or neck pain, along with the, the you know, arm issue, then coming and working directly with the neck is not going to do a whole lot because if the shoulders are forward and that shoulder girdle is, is compressed, then it's going to just structurally not allow the release of the cervical spine back to this natural curvature. So, I come in, I'm really trying to encourage this shoulder external rotation, working on these deltoids on the pec insertions and just really encouraging. I like to kind of move the joint as I'm moving the tissue. And you can really feel right under the deltoid where the attachment points are of the pec. And you, and you can really feel how, how taut everything is. I'm always trying to go for the tendinous attachments first to help release some of the tension on the muscle belly. So if I can work everywhere where it is attached, because the pec is attached to underneath the clavicle along the sternum so i really want to palpate those areas first and see how much tissue is bound up at those areas because remember i said that if we're working the the tendinous attachments we're activating the golgi tendon organ 
-hmm. to release pressure so it doesn't pull off of, of the bone. It's, it's the, the safety wire, safety net of the muscle. So if the muscle body is tight, it's gonna be pulling on both ends of the attachment points where the tendons are. So if we can loosen those first, then we're gonna have more mobility in the muscle body to work. And right now I'm doing the really pin and, and compress, pin and shorten. I'm kind of like pushing and shortening the muscle as I'm stretching the arm out. Getting a sheer force to the deeper layers of fascia. And the more you can, I can get her arm to naturally just melt down with gravity, I'm allowing gravity to, to pull as I'm pressing. Because a lot of times people are so tight in the chest that their arm is like stuck up here and you can let it go and it, it's pulling against gravity. So the more you can get gravity to assist you, the nervous system was born in gravity, like, you know, was made and born in gravity, so it, it understands the forces of gravity. So the body relaxes much easier if it's being pulled down by gravity versus you pushing onto the body. Pushing onto the body, the body has to, has to figure out what it is because there's no eyes or ears on the nervous system. It's, it's only sensation. So a pushing sensation could be a horse stepping on your body. It could be a boar's tusk, you know, attacking you. So it just understands through proprioception where the earth is and where in, in, in the force of gravity. So it's just easier for the body to relax. Right. Now, coming in shortening pinning and doing some abduction and you want to I'm doing sheer force but with a broader surface of the palm of my hand instead of poking at the tissue I'm, I'm grabbing as much tissue as I can on a broad flat surface and then getting that sheer force just like if you would put a ball of Play-Doh into that little, little pasta machine, you know, that thing where you make the shapes, you're squeezing the, the tissue through a small opening, forcing all of the interstitial fluid to squeeze and, and, and move through the tissue layers. And I'm really, I'm really holding down the superficial layer of fascia. And as I contract and relax the, the muscle body underneath, it's going to slide underneath my hand, causing that sheer force of the superficial to deep layer. How you doing? Yeah. Yeah. And with females, you know, there's there's only so far that you can go until you are on the, the fatty breast tissue and it can be uncomfortable. But with males, you can really work down to the nipple and then into the attachment point of the sternum. But you see how I'm moving the joint as I'm 
working the tissue, compressing the tissue, the more you can do both. It's like the Tin Man oiling his arm and moving his arm at the same time. Like you just don't want to just oil the area. You want to move the joint and all of the fluids can, can move through. And the more oxygen and circulation that the, the tissues get, the more the nervous system says, ah, I want this. This is, this is what I've been lacking. So it's going to continue to allow the tissues to the skeletal muscles to relax and open up.